Well, Rough Country just came out the cool new part. A little bit of a facelift for the new generation Silverado, and guess what? More lighting. I'm freezing my butt off. It's gonna be a fun one, guys. Woo! Fall parking here, I think. We need some more. So if you're old, a has-been athlete, and own a Ford truck, you also might like the fin... <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, son of a bitch. Well, we're back with another weekend and we're back with more car parts. Guys, welcome back to the channel in my piece of paradise, the Lone Star Hawaiian garage. We got a part from Rough Country right there that I've been waiting on for a little bit. It's gonna take a part of this front bumper and give an additional definition to make the front end of this truck look even more tenacious than it does today. And on top of that, we're gonna add more lights. Yeah, we're, yeah, lots of lights. That is gonna look sweet. Guys, this is the Rough Country front fascia cover for the new generation Silverado. So that's 2019 to 2022. Also allows you to utilize your front fog lamps, still have your tow hooks. But there was a company called Air Design that came out with a front fascia kit, fairly similar to this. Now that one was incredibly expensive. Happy Rough Country has come out with a more affordable option. It's still a fairly expensive piece of plastic, but this is gonna look good. The install should be pretty simple and straightforward. It's gonna bolt up right over the top of our front bumper. Outside of drilling a few holes and popping in a few push pins, there's really not a lot of modifying you really need to do, but we'll also need to wire in our brand new LED lights that are integrated into our front fascia kit because as you guys well know, there's no such thing as uh, too much lighting. But if you guys are by chance new to the channel and joining in for the first time, a special aloha and welcome. I'm just a crazy Hawaiian Texan that has a couple of trucks and a car and a garage and makes a couple of videos from time to time. If you're enjoying the content at any point in the video, feel free to scroll down, hit that subscribe button below. Join the Ohana, join the family. We've got a ton coming up for both of these trucks this year. You're not gonna wanna miss. But for today, let's get this party started. Now I really wish installs would go as it's directed in the instructions, but it really never does. So what we have here are our two LED lights that are gonna go at the bottom of this fascia cover. Now the instructions direct that you're supposed to kind of bend these in an arch and then fit them through these small slots on either side. You run the wire basically up behind. You can go through the fascia on this one, which requires you to drill a hole right about there. Or what I'm gonna do is actually run it along the bottom because it's gonna be covered anyways. But the issue is the ends of these LED lights are so sneaking thick, they do not fit through those gaps that are manufactured. You can see there, that really small gap. On top of that, these are razor sharp. So I was trying to fit this through here and actually already cut slits on the very end. So what we've been doing for the last few minutes, we got our Dremel. We had to Dremel out this quite a bit for this to even try and fit through. So after Dremeling it out, there we go, it's now gonna fit. So that's what we're doing, we gotta do that on the other side as well, but I will say it does look incredible on the front of this truck. All right, so we got both LEDs inserted. The wires are just kind of dangling down, but because it is winter, cold, humid, the 3M adhesive is not being a team player. So we have a heat gun. We're gonna heat this up quite a bit. Try to get this 3M adhesive to actually adhere to the dang plastic. Wow. 
This looks incredible. Rough Country. Very well done, guys. Dang, well done. I will say though, smoked tint will make an appearance in today's vlog at some time. As I look at the front end here, I got a blacked out theme kind of going on and those LEDs at the bottom aren't really doing me any favors. We still got a lot of work to do with all the wiring, how the heck we're gonna do this thing and mounting up. But before we continue on, I got something to show you guys because over the holiday and the break, we had the chance to visit this frozen tundra wasteland called Utah. You a little chilly? <laughs> How's that elevation treating you? I'll let you know about five minutes. <laughs> Beanie, a hoodie, and a helmet. And this is probably part of me that's warm. Well, look at that. It looks so pretty today. Totally kidding. It's a gorgeous place, a fun holiday. But for Christmas, I had the chance to get my dad a brand new Exter wallet. Now, if you guys don't know what Exter wallets are, they're the world's largest smart wallet brand. I've been using them for about two years now, and I absolutely love mine. Recently, I've upgraded to the coveted material of carbon fiber but this is the forged carbon fiber specifically, but over the holiday break, I had the chance to get my hands on two additional wallet types from Exter in some sand dunes. Wait, what? Well, great news guys, we're parting back up again today with Exter. We have seen them before on the channel and we'll probably see them again here in the future because they are phenomenal minimalist wallets that are changing the game. And if you reverse back a few weeks ago, we brought you guys some really cool carbon fiber options that Exter offers. And I cannot believe how many of you guys went on and made purchases. Every one of these links are affiliate links. Thank you for the support. What we're gonna be seeing today is two additional options that Exter offers. Now the first option I'm gonna show you is the digital camo. This one is really cool, caught my eye immediately. And it's one of their less expensive wallets. A simple lever action, kicks all your cards out. Everything is accessible, super easy. Now, for some of you older guys, namely my dad, that just love leather wallets, Extra has you covered there too. The Pachata Pachetta. I really can't say this word. Pachata Pachetta Pachetta. Pachata. So, this word here, Parliament Wallet, it's actually a very genuine high quality leather wallet and it does have space for additional cards which my dad actually wanted and it holds again all six within in the back side my frozen fingers the chipolo tracker you stick that in there you forget about it until you actually need it and it saves your butt link in description below guys use code lsh at checkout for an additional discount all right, Dad, now that I filmed the product spot, it's all done. Merry all Christmas. Right. Thank there you, you go. Yeah, awesome. Thank you. Now get rid of my paper uh, wallet that your mom hates so much. <laughs> this is great, thanks. Link in description below, guys. I'm freezing. Back to Texas. This one's going to be nice. <laughs> <laughs> we are back. It is freezing cold outside. It was 71 degrees yesterday. It is now 28 degrees. So Texas decided to be winter once again. So we're posted up here in Paradise Cove. And because it is so cold, the truck, I just didn't have any ability to clean it because I'm a Hawaiian Texan and a little bit of a pansy when it comes to cold. So the truck will remain dirty for today's vlog. But I have been looking at this front end for an entire week and I love this piece from Rough Country. This little extension amongst the front bumper really sets the whole front end off. But the LEDs at the bottom, not a huge fan. It kind of screws up the aesthetics I had going on. So what we're gonna do today is one, we're gonna wire them in so they're functional, but we're gonna wire them in to the fog lamp. So when the fog lamps are on, those will come on as well. But in, in normal day-to-day -day driving, it's not gonna pull away from the lifted truck effect we have going on. We're also gonna wrap it in a dark smoked hex tent to really ghost it into this front end so it's not such a yellow and orange eyesore. What we're also gonna be doing today by highly requested demand our tow hooks. These are going to our ocean color. When I say ocean, there's this teal blue color we've been kind of implementing throughout the truck here. So those are going that color. So we're going to pull those off, wire all these in. I'm freezing my butt off, so we're going to start working right now. Let's go. Hey. 
is like three inches of our kitchen right now. So I figured I'd show you guys how I'm getting these out. There's only two bolts holding it in on the inside. They're pretty easy to access. There's just limited room to fit an impact in here. But the one of the bolts is right here. The other one is right behind it. This one screws directly into the tow hook. And then the other one goes all the way through to the back side where there's another nut back there. I'm using an 18 millimeter socket, both sides, and it's just taking time. Nice. And then this is kind of goofy. There's a big piece of foam here which sits in between the, the buffer fascia and the frame, probably to reduce vibrations. And it's deceiving, but you kind of just work your way out. You just pull the sucker out of there. There you go. So we've taken a little bit of time thinking through how we're gonna be wiring our LEDs in. I decided I did not want to go ahead and cut and splice directly into the backside of that fog lamp. Instead, I'm going to use a simple fuse tap here at the fuse box. So the fuse we're tapping into controls the fog lamps and what this allows me to do, if I do remove this one day, I can simply just pop the fuse back in and there's no traces of me being in here at all versus cutting and splicing directly into the back of that. Now on each of these aftermarket LEDs, there's three wires. There's a white, a brown, and a red. The white goes to ground, the brown controls the amber LEDs, and then the red is power to the white LEDs. So we're gonna run the red wire up to the fuse tap, the white wire to a ground here on the frame somewhere back here, and then the brown wire, we're just gonna cap off. I don't wanna do anything with the amber, so we're just gonna use the white. I hate electrics. We'll start with the good news. That LED is way brighter than I thought it was going to. That's actually gonna illuminate down the road really nicely. Uh, the, the bad part is you can clearly see that fog lamp's working. That one's not. That LED's working. That's not. I have no freaking idea what's going on. <laughs> oh, I'm an idiot. There we go. Okay, three out of four working. We're making progress. I think what's happening is I ran both red wires and spliced them together and ran one wire up to the fuse box. So it's feeding 12 volts down. But I think what I did when I tapped it, I probably didn't tap it good enough to where it's not actually connecting the power. <sighs> Please mark three, two, one. Let's go. <clears throat> I don't know if we have enough light. Fall parking here, I think we need some more. Oh, that's nuts. Okay, so that was a pain, but it's done. We're gonna clean up the wires, get everything tied up and tucked out of the way. And my next step is gonna be wrapping those red tow hooks. And we're heading inside because the garage is too cold to wrap those things. The wrap will just break. All right, that was a pain. This looks really funny the way it sits. And I'm not gonna say how many pieces I had to wrap this in because it's slightly embarrassing. But I will say I got better as I went. The second one, I only used two and a half pieces. Yeah, you can figure out the half.
gonna do it guys. I am freezing my Okole off. We will see you in a few days for our next video. Thank you so much for tuning in with me. Until then, aloha. I'll tell you what's super fun in the wintertime when all these ducks come down here. It's kind of messed up, but it's a lot of fun. Take a couple dirt bikes with them. This looks really fun. Awesome guys, so if you're old, a has-been athlete and own a Ford truck, you also might like the fin... <laughs> oh, could... oh, son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs>